Well, part of the charges were simple and part of them get more complicated. And the simple part was that he was charged with falsifying business records and a lot of the evidence was about that. Where it gets a little more complicated is New York was seeking to charge him under a more serious law with stiffer penalties and felony penalties uh, for uh, the type of business falsification that attempts to cover up uh, uh, the intent to commit a crime. Now, if they can prove that, which is what they set out to prove, uh, as I said, the penalties are stiffer, but it opens up the question of what was that other crime? Now, that's where much of the confusion uh, came in during the case, because there have been cited three or four different laws that Trump might have been trying to break uh, by uh, his falsification. And those appear in things like a memo from the prosecutor to the judge, but they were not necessarily explained clearly to the jury. And so there's also a question uh, of this uh, affecting the election, but that would be under federal jurisdiction. And then you have the state trying to prosecute under the jurisdiction of the feds. So you understand where people might be a little confused about that. It's not uncommon in prosecutions for both the federal government and the state uh, government to have laws that they believe were broken and to independently prosecute. Now, the federal government looked at this series of transactions. They charged Trump's lawyer, but they didn't charge Trump. Uh, New York came in. Now, New York cannot prosecute under the federal laws, but New York has its own laws, in particular the business falsification one. They came in, and the fact that there are potential federal issues in the case um, uh, doesn't mean that New York can't prosecute. They battled before the judge. Trump tried to get some of the charges thrown out on the grounds that it was too much like a federal issue, that the federal government's law uh, preempted the state law or that the New York law could apply only to New York campaigns like for governor and not to federal campaigns like the one for president. The judge ruled against Trump on those motions, but of course he might come back on appeal and say the judge got it wrong. Okay, so now the former president of the United States is convicted of a felony. What is his status right now as a citizen and as a voter? So could he go and vote, for example, in a primary election in New York or in Florida? In Florida, where he would probably want to vote, the state's law is favorable to him because although they will not let you vote if you are a convicted felon in Florida in many circumstances. If you were convicted in a different state, as here, uh, and that state would let you vote currently, uh, you can go ahead. So Florida will probably let him vote for now. Uh, that will change if he is incarcerated. But for now, you can probably vote in Florida. And uh, he is free to move around and do most things that he could do uh, before the conviction uh, until sentencing comes in July. And it's at that point that we learn uh, to what extent he will be able to go out on the campaign trail, uh, because that will depend on how Judge Merchant rules in his uh, uh, July sentencing. 